Okay, I'm going to show you and tell you what I think are the ways to achieve really successful grilling. I'm going to grill three different kinds of protein, some fish, some beef, and some chicken, um, just to show you how that all plays out. But first, let's talk about grill. Probably a lot of you are cooking over a gas grill, so that's what I'm doing today because you'll be able to relate to it. I would never heat the whole grill up. I always leave one burner off because I always like to have a cool spot in my grill that I can move things to coast to doneness. If you're always cooking over the hottest part of the grill, then you have to be exactly precise in when you take it off and then let it rest. But if you have a cool part of your grill, you can just move it over there and just let it coast along. Uh, second thing is grill grates are important. If you only have the chrome grill grates, then my suggestion is look for an insert perhaps to your grill that is a, um, well, a, some kind of an iron grate, like a cast iron grate or something that will hold heat because chrome won't hold heat and tends to be stickier than pretty much any other surface. Always heat your grill thoroughly. Don't try to get the thing lit and then immediately start grilling because it is the temperature of the grill grates that are absolutely maximally important for getting the food on and off the grill in good shape. Now I'm going to open this up and show you because I got it hot now. It's sort of like medium high um, on this side and it's off on this side. Um, this is probably your most important piece of grill equipment uh, because the cleaner your grill grates are, the less sticky they will be. If you have something like a cast iron grill grate, uh, these are actually rolled stainless steel um, and they're really wonderful to cook on, but they don't, they don't season exactly the way that cast iron wood, but I still kind of treat them that same way. Still, no matter what your grill grates are, always clean them before you put anything on them. They should be spick and span clean. We grill on cast iron at our restaurants with a wood fire. And one of these is beside the grill at all times because every 10 minutes the grill cook will be completely cleaning the grill to make sure that it's not sticky. The second couple pieces of equipment that you're going to want to have next to you is a spatula with a long handle. This would be more for your fish and then a pair of long handle tongs. This would be great for your fish, I mean your meat or your poultry. I always have a spray bottle of oil and this is the best spray bottle that I've ever worked with. It really is very, very useful to me. Now there's controversy as to whether you oil the grates or the food. Um, I sort of oil my grill grates as they're heating up and then clean the grill really well. So that's sort of like seasoning the grill grates. And then I really oil my, my food. That's what we've found 34 years of grilling at Frontera that oil the food, oil the food, oil the food. That's going to be the best thing. Now I'm not going to go into any fancy marinades here because we don't have to, to get really beautiful flavor out of beautiful proteins. But the thing that I'm going to show you is how much salt you put on top of things because most people just take a little um, salt shaker and season their food with that. And when you're grilling, that won't work. It's double the amount of salt that you think that you're going to need. It will not taste salty. I can guarantee you of that. The fish and the meat need the most salt in my opinion, but we're crusting them there. And then I'm going to put some pepper on there just because I think it looks really beautiful. Now, marinades seem to be everybody's fascination. I think sometimes they're a little overrated um, and really good grilling is a great way to get great flavor. So I'm just doing salt and pepper here today. Now I've grilled, I have done that on one side. I'm going to salt the other side of it here um, before we get started throwing them on the grill here. Um, so as I said, probably double the amount of salt that you think it's going to need. I know a lot of you are gasping right now thinking that this isn't going to be good, but I can guarantee you from a lot of years of experience, it will be good. Okay, next is to oil them well, a little bit more than what you think they're going to need. So oil them well, and then I'm going to lay them all on the grill using the pair of tongs. I'm going to put the beef 
in the hottest spot, which I know on this grill is right there. Now, if I were to try to pull it off of here, it will be stuck. All food sticks when you put it on. You have to be not a fidgety griller, but a patient griller. I'll put the chicken breasts here. I'm doing boneless, skinless chicken breasts because I know a lot of you like boneless, skinless chicken breast. And then in this, actually I need to put this in a very hot spot too. Fish will go back there. You always, 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 fish is the hardest thing to grill because it's flaky. And if it sticks, then you're going to have problems getting it to getting it off without it sort of tearing apart, okay? So I always say start fish in the hottest spot on the grill, and then you can flip it over onto a cool spot on the grill and let it coast to doneness. But you're gonna get that really beautiful sear on that one side, the place that went into the hottest part of the grill. Um, and this, well, likewise with all of these things, and just leave them be. Then when I flip fish, I always flip the fish with a spatula because I can gingerly go up underneath it. And if it is stuck in any places there, I can just very gently go under and, and then pry it off and still make it look really great. So this is going to take, well, I'm going to say it's going to be about five minutes or so per side for this piece of ribeye that we have here. It's sort of a little bit the same for these chicken breasts here. But the fish will be the first thing that we will be looking to flip here. Um, so we'll just kind of hang out with it until I feel like that they're ready to flip. I'm going to spray the top side now with a lot of oil because I'm going to flip it over onto that side there. And with my spatula, I'm going to just go underneath this piece of fish. It looks like it's a little bit sticky on that back corner there. there I've, I've freed it now completely so I can see that. And then I'm going to flip it over under this side. So that's pretty one little place there where it's stuck all tiny little bit, but it looks really pretty. Um, that's what I'm looking for. Now let's talk about your fancy marinades, okay? Because if it's got oil and vinegar or oil and lime juice and some herbs and spices, you're home free. Okay, those will work really well. If you start getting into a lot of other things that perhaps could have a sweet element in it, you're just guaranteed that they're going to stick on the grill. So if you really like a sweet tangy marinade on something, after you flip the fish, or the meat or the chicken, that's when you can just brush that over it and it'll sort of set on it um, like a glaze and think of it more as a glaze than as a marinade because sweet marinades always have a tendency to stick. Let's look at these other pieces of fish, here. I mean of uh, meat here. So there's our beautiful steak now, um, beautifully marked also. Chicken looks a little bit pale to me so I'm going to just leave it upside down there uh, until I get some more heat. Seems like I told you that this was like the, the hottest part of the grill here. So I'm going to move it back just to where it is a little bit hotter and see if I can get some more color on it. You'll notice that that fish is going to only cook for now a couple of minutes on this side uh, because I like to cook it about two thirds to three quarters on the side that's down first, flip it and then I'll let it cook for just a short period of time. That ensures to me that it's gonna get that beautiful crust on one side and the side that's down doesn't have to be as crusted. So I think it's probably about ready to take off here. So I have a rimmed baking sheet with a cooling rack sitting on top of it. And this is what I highly, highly, highly recommend for anyone that's doing any grilling. Always put your, your meat, your proteins on a rack like this because you can, well, first of all, it will allow them to reabsorb the juices that are in them, very important for beef and pork. Um, but it will allow them to reabsorb uh, those juices. But it's also a great way to keep them from leaking out things by touching directly onto another surface. Plus, 
I usually have an oven on low so that after I've grilled stuff, I can just like put them on here and then slide them into that very low oven, just on warm, and it'll keep them in good shape. Okay, so I'm gonna take the piece of uh, fish off here. You see how gingerly I go up underneath there and we'll put that on there like that. And I'm just about ready, I think, to flip this Flip this chicken now. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah, it's getting a little bit more color on it now. It looks a little more appetizing there. Okay, and I think my beef, oh, it's, it's ready. Okay, so I'm gonna take it completely over here where it's cool, and let's talk about how do I, I just touched it, what was I doing? Okay, so this muscle that is between your index finger and your thumb here, you're gonna want to touch that when your hand is completely relaxed. That's what raw meat feels like. Now, do a very clenched fish, fist and feel that same muscle. It's very hard. That's what well done beef looks like. Now, relax it about half. That's what medium meat, uh, meat will feel like. And so when I touched it, it feels about medium on this side and medium rare on this side because it's a little bit thicker there. So I'm gonna take this off because that's where I want it to be and I'll just put it in to go along with the, the salmon. All right, we've got it all off. Now, a lot of times people will ask me about closing the grill because we haven't really talked about that. And you've seen me grilling with the, uh, uh, in an open situation for this whole time. You can do that if you've got small pieces of meat or chicken or fish. In fact, I oftentimes like to do that because I can watch exactly what's going on here. But especially if you're gonna throw some um, soaked wood chips in here and you wanna get a little of that smokiness in it, um, closing the grill for a minute or two while it's in that first stage down um, will actually create a really nice uh, heat that is surrounding everything it will probably mean that it will cook just a few seconds maybe a minute faster when you do it that way but then I always say that you should keep it checking on it because you never know what's quite going to happen in there if there's too much oil on on it it will start to flare up and you want to be able to sort of move things around when that happens so I do a lot of my grilling of small pieces like the chicken breasts and the steak and the fish just with the top open for the whole time if it's going to take more than about seven or eight minutes then yeah I will close that to create that whole that that beautiful ambiance of uh of heat all around all of the proteins. I certainly hope that all of these little tips and tricks help you. Oh, one more thing. Um, after you have grilled, um, there's something that I typically like to do is to close it down for about 10 minutes or so just to burn off anything that is residual on here. And then I come back and with my grill um, cleaner, my brush, um, I'll really go at it like this because I don't want any of that stuff to be residual um, over the time that I'm not using the grill. So all the way to the back there and clean it really well. And now, when it's that clean, I'll close it down and I will turn it off.